And this is where things start to get very bizarre for Jack Wheeler. Possibly been a kill for hire sort of situation. Who killed Jack Wheeler? I feel like I'm all head. Also, why don't I sit in the chair behind me? We don't know. Hey guys, welcome back, or if you are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney, and I'm here to give you the creeps. If you're into true horror, I highly suggest that you hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you're notified every single time that I upload, because I come on here every single week and tell you guys another true and scary story. So for today's Unresolved Mystery video, guys, I'm very excited just because it's a video and topic that you all picked out for me. So for those of you guys who don't follow me on Twitter, I actually sent out a tweet just a couple of days ago asking you about two specific unresolved mystery cases that I wanted to cover here in the near future and asked which one you would prefer to see this week. Now while everyone seemed pretty interested in both of these cases, it was pretty clear by the end of the poll that the one case that I'm covering today was exactly what everyone wanted to see from me this week, which made me really excited because it was also the case that I wanted to talk about this week, so you know, everyone wins. Now I don't want to give it away just yet just because I have a way that I kind of want to set things up for you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our unresolved mystery. Also, if you guys notice that I look kind of dead inside, but also seem pretty jittery, it's because I'm running on coffee. Yeah. So this unresolved mystery starts on the morning of December 31st in 2010 in the town of Newcastle, Delaware. It's New Year's Eve, we think that we're gonna have a good day, but we don't, unfortunately. This is due to the fact that employees at a local landfill discovered something a little bit disturbing hidden within the garbage that had been placed there. Now, immediately as the situation started to unfold, the managing staff of this landfill decided to call back all of the trucks that were in transit that morning because they had found a body hidden within the garbage that had been brought to the landfill that morning. We're coming in hot. Now, obviously, as these trucks are coming back to the landfill, investigators are called onto the scene to kind of figure out what happened and whose body this was. Once responding officers arrived at the landfill, they kind of took a look at the situation and then took a look at the body itself. From there, they were actually able to identify this body as a well-known public servant who worked as a White House aide during the Bush administration, and his name was Jack Wheeler. Immediately upon identifying this body, investigators automatically knew that there was some sort of foul play involved here. Like this was definitely a crime and it could have been a crime for hire situation. That said, even though they knew that a crime had been committed, they knew that this location that the body had been found wasn't actually the crime scene itself. Like the body had been removed from the crime scene and therefore there wasn't very much evidence for them to go off of. That being said, investigators do what they can and immediately started going through the garbage that had been in the same pile that the body was found in. And I guess by looking through the addresses on discarded mail, they were able to determine that this pile of garbage and therefore the body had come from the Newark area. That said, Jack Wheeler was a pretty public figure and I guess one of the responding officers knew that he had a home there in Newcastle that he lived at part time. For that reason, they also reached out to Newcastle PD to kind of let them know what was going on just because one of their residents was found in a landfill like they should probably know about that right that being said you can probably imagine how surprised they were to hear that Jack Wheeler himself was actually found dead hidden in a landfill because at that precise moment they were actually on the way to his home to investigate a possible robbery. Yes, you heard me right. With that in mind, the Newcastle PD kind of showed up at this possible robbery location with the mindset that it could also have a tie to a possible murder of the resident of the home itself. Now, the possible robbery itself was actually called in by Jack's part-time house sitter and neighbor, Robert Dill, who noticed that morning that one of the exterior windows of the home had been left ajar. Given that Jack did trust him with house sitting from time to time, he took it upon himself to go and check out what was going on within the home because he didn't think that it was normal to have a window open in late December in Delaware, you know? And as he approached, he also found that the side entrance was also left ajar. Very, very concerning, very, very fishy, if you ask me. For that reason, Robert decided to use this side door as a way to enter the home, just to check in with Jack and make sure everything was okay. And what he found when he entered the home was very bizarre. Now, if I understood correctly from the layout of Jack's Newcastle home, this side entrance actually takes Robert into Jack's kitchen. And when he entered the kitchen, it was very obvious that the entire house had been ransacked. 
One of Jack's house plants had been knocked over, there were broken dishes in the sink, and just a bunch of other stuff that had been thrown around in a chaotic manner. Now what was particularly strange to Robert when he discovered this scene was the fact that there was a white powdery substance all over the kitchen floor. That said, investigators as well as Robert believed that this substance was Comet just because there was a spilled Comet box within one of the cabinets. And what's even more bizarre is within this powdery substance were Jack's ceremonial West Point swords as well as a bare footprint. Now obviously upon taking in this scene, Robert knew that something villainous had happened within the home itself, so he decided to call this in as a potential robbery and waited for the police to show up to take his statement. Now shortly after Robert called in the situation, the Newcastle PD showed up to Jack's home. They of course take his statement and then from there they kind of start going through Jack's house to see if they can kind of gather any sort of information and get together a timeline on what happened. And at some point during this investigation of this robbery, the Newcastle PD gets word that there's another situation forming across the street. I know. Wild. Now apparently, a few days before the situation started to unfold, there was actually a possible arson attack at a house that was under construction across the street from Jack's Newcastle home. And as this arson attack was being investigated, different members of the Newcastle PD actually found a cell phone on the scene. And this cell phone belonged to Jack Wheeler. So already less than 24 hours into the investigation for Jack Wheeler's death, he is connected to two more crimes with two more separate investigations. Now between these three separate investigations, investigators on the state as well as the federal level start to get together a timeline on what happened to Jack in the days leading up to his death. And in doing that, they find that Jack's final days on earth were even more bizarre than the situation that he'd left behind, if that's even possible. That in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys hour by hour through this timeline of the last few days that Jack spent here on Earth so that we can get a good idea of what actually happened to Jack Wheeler and possibly answer the question, who killed Jack Wheeler? Now this loose timeline actually starts on December 28th of 2010 in Jack's New York home, where he had just finished celebrating Christmas with his wife, Kathy, and his children. Now in previous years, the Wheeler family had actually used the days in between Christmas and New Year as a way to catch up on films that they may have missed throughout the year and as a way of spending more time with each other as a family. For that reason, on that morning when he told his wife, Kathy, that he was planning on heading back to the city, she was a little bit upset with him seeing how they always did this as a family every single year. That said, it really is important to note here that Jack was a very work-minded individual. According to friends and family, he was always doing something for work or had work on his mind and just couldn't sit still otherwise. So even though Kathy was disappointed and a little bit upset about the fact that Jack was bailing on these family plans, she also wasn't really surprised with the fact that he chose to go back to work in DC. So after a slight argument with his wife, he ends up gathering his things and heads to an Amtrak station there in New York where he catches a train into Washington, D.C. Now, when Jack arrived in D.C. on the morning of December 28th, he puts in a full day of work at his office at a company called the Mitre Corporation, where he worked in cybersecurity with a pretty high security clearance. After he puts in this day of work, he ends up going home to his house in Newcastle, and this is where things start to get very bizarre for Jack Wheeler. Now, the following morning, Jack Wheeler never showed up for work, and he ended up emailing his supervisors saying that he had been robbed the night prior. In this email, he specifically states that his wallet, his cell phone, and most importantly, his briefcase had been taken from him during this robbery. And to make matters worse, Jack Wheeler did work within cybersecurity at this company that I referenced earlier, and he did have a really high security clearance. So it's not surprising that the contents of this briefcase were pretty confidential. So this coupled with his various different connections within high level government made the theft of his briefcase and phone even more of a problem for Jack Wheeler. That said guys, according to the Washington Post, Jack Wheeler also sent an email to his therapist saying that he was in kind of a daze after an argument that he had with his wife, Kathy. Then at around 6 p.m., he was captured via security footage at his local pharmacy in Newcastle. Now Jack was somewhat of a regular of this pharmacy. According to my research, Jack actually had bipolar disorder and this was the location in which he picked up his prescription medications for that bipolar disorder. And guys, just as another side note, for this story, Jack's wife and therapist claimed that he had a pretty good handle on his everyday life and that the bipolar disorder really just made him go through manic episodes every once in a while. I'm not sure if this whole situation was the result of one of these episodes, but it is just something to note here. Now that said guys, Jack wasn't actually at this pharmacy to pick up any prescription medications that were called in by his therapist. Instead, he was walking around the pharmacy itself, asking the pharmacist as well as other patrons for a ride to Wilmington. Now when investigators came across this information, they had assumed that he was trying to catch a ride 
to where he had parked his car. He left his car at an Amtrak station in Wilmington before he had left for Christmas back up in New York. That being said, it was still pretty bizarre for him to be walking around in this pharmacy asking random strangers for a ride to this car and location when he was a very distinguished man and public figure. It's also important to note, at least for me, that it seemed like within the security footage that he was in some sort of a daze, which I guess isn't really all that surprising seeing how he had just previously emailed his therapist saying that he felt dazed after this conversation with Kathy. But either way, I just felt like the security footage within and of itself was very um, creepy for lack of a better word. That said guys, after a few minutes of walking around and asking individuals for a ride, he comes across two individuals who said that they would take him to his car in Wilmington. And in about 45 minutes after that point, he was spotted yet again via security footage in a parking garage in Wilmington. Now this is where our story takes yet another turn because as it happens, Jack Wheeler actually ended up at the wrong parking garage that night. And in the security footage at this parking garage, he went from being merely dazed to absolutely frantic. And when I say the security footage was creepy AF, I mean it was creepy AF, okay? Now, like I said, Jack was actually in the wrong parking garage. And as it turned out, his car was eventually discovered just a few blocks away from this location. That in mind, it is pretty important to note yet again that his friends and family said that he was never one to be good with directions. And he seemed to always be losing things, including where he had parked his car. Like same, I would lose my head if it wasn't attached to me, so it wouldn't surprise me if I somehow managed to lose my car. So with that in mind, it wasn't too surprising to investigators or to his friends and family that he may have just given the wrong address to these individuals who had given him a ride to Wilmington. Either way, Jack Wheeler ended up wandering around this parking garage for a decent amount of time before he went to the reception desk to ask for help. And within the security footage that was caught at the reception desk, we can clearly see that Jack Wheeler was wandering around with one of his shoes in his hands, which meant that his bare foot was exposed to the cement within the parking garage for God knows how long. I don't know about you guys, but I just find that really, really gross. So now aside from that fact alone, the security footage shows that he is frantically asking the receptionist at the desk for help. And according to this receptionist, he just kept saying over and over again that his briefcase had been stolen. She was trying to ask him for his ticket so that she could help him locate his car. And all he could do was say, it's in my briefcase, my briefcase was stolen, my briefcase was stolen, my briefcase was stolen. That being said, the receptionist does what she can to help him. However, without his ticket to be able to locate where his car was, there wasn't all that much she could do. So after a few minutes of back and forth and him frantically telling her that his briefcase had been taken from him, he ended up leaving the parking garage in a very kind of distraught and frantic manner. Now, after leaving this parking garage, Jack Wheeler was captured yet again via security footage in the basement of something called the Nemours Building, which was an office building located in downtown Wilmington. Now, according to this timeline, it seemed to investigators that Jack Wheeler had actually spent the evening of December 29th, as well as the majority of the day on December 30th, 2010, hiding within this office building basement. Now, this obviously struck investigators as very odd for a multitude of reasons, but the most peculiar thing about the entire situation was the fact that the Nemours building had no professional or personal connection to Jack Wheeler at all. For that reason, it almost seemed that he was using this office building as a means to shift from running from something or someone to simply hiding from something or someone. That said, at around 8.20 p.m. on December 30th of 2010, security cameras yet again capture Jack Wheeler leaving the Nemours building. However, this time he was wearing a black hoodie, which seemingly didn't belong to him. Now, obviously this outfit change within and of itself was a little bit weird to investigators as well as just to people who followed this case. However, at least in my opinion, it seemed that he was using this black hoodie as a means to turn on the metaphorical incognito mode. It's like he put on this sweatshirt and all of a sudden he went from being this distinguished public figure with high level government connections to just a regular Joe on the street. I don't know, that might just be my opinion. Now with that in mind guys, about 20 minutes later, Jack Wheeler is caught for the final time via security footage 
walking within the streets of downtown Wilmington. This recording was actually captured via security cameras at the Hotel Dumas, where he is seen just walking up the street past the hotel, still wearing this black hoodie. Now, by watching the security footage at this point in the timeline, it seemed that Jack Wheeler was still dazed and in a sort of panic, but from there, that is the final time that he has been recorded or seen alive. Now, as we already know, the following morning, Jack's body was found discarded within the landfill, which was a seemingly perfect place to dispose of a body that you didn't want to be found. Now, once his remains were examined and recovered, his family planned a funeral, and then he was buried in Arlington National Cemetery. That being said, the story doesn't really end there as there are a few theories that could possibly answer the question, who killed Jack Wheeler? And I'm gonna go through those very quickly before I close out this video. Now, the first of these theories and the most plausible, at least in my opinion, is the idea that this could have possibly been a kill for hire sort of situation. Now, as I said, Jack was a prominent public figure. He worked as a White House aide during the Bush administration and had a lot of connections within the upper level government. Likewise, he also worked for this cybersecurity company with a very high level security clearance. So it wasn't too far fetched for investigators to believe that he may have knew something that an individual or a group of individuals didn't want him to know, and therefore they decided to take matters into their own hands to dispose of the situation. Now, like I said, to me, this seems like the most plausible explanation for everything that happened. And if I'm not mistaken, investigators do believe that this is the most likely of all the theories that they came up with. That being said, there are two more theories that I just wanna to touch base on. The second of these theories is that this could have been possibly just a random mugging that was seemingly connected to all of these other weird coincidences that happened to Jack in the days leading up to his disappearance and death. But like I said, investigators don't necessarily believe this to be true just because it seemed to be premeditated and too well planned out for it to just be a random mugging. Likewise, he did have a few valuables on his body at the time of his death, including his West Point class ring of 66, which was relatively valuable, like I said. And to investigators, it just seemed that if anyone mugging him would have gone through the trouble of murdering him and hiding his body, they would have taken these valuables, you know? Now, the third and final theory that I have for you guys, in my opinion, is probably the least probable of any of the theories that investigators came up with, because it's just simply that the entire situation that happened to Jack Wheeler over the course of these three days was simply an accident. In fact, some of the investigators have even theorized that this death is so accidental that Jack had just simply climbed into a dumpster in order to shield himself from the elements and met his demise that way. I don't know about that one, but okay, I guess. That being said, guys, regardless of which theory you choose to believe, I find the story is still really weird and sinister, and I just couldn't help share it with you guys on my channel, especially seeing how you guys seem to be just as interested in it as I was. But with that being said, guys, I think that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. If you did make it all the way here to the end and liked what you saw, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. Also leave a comment down below letting me know what you think could have possibly happened to Jack Wheeler. Let me know your theories. Let Let's talk about it because you know I love talking about this stuff. And finally, guys, thanks so much for watching. My name is Courtney. I run a true horror channel here on YouTube. I like to create content every single week to scare you guys in the best possible way. So if that's something you're interested in seeing more of, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you're notified every single time that I upload. And with that said, I'll see you all next week for another new video. Bye.